Ladies and gentlemen, this is really interesting. It's an article by Paul Sperry, great journalist at the forefront of all of this, along with Tom Fitton and John Solomon and Kimberly Strassel and Sarah Carter and Dan Bongino and Victoria Tenzing and Joe DeGeneva and Sean Hannity and other people. Not many other people, but there are people at the forefront. And he's a great journalist. And he wrote this very interesting article. Trump order also grants Barr power to declassify still, uh, uh, still secret Hillary docs. And he goes on, the documents are said to implica- implicate the Clinton campaign and form- uh, former Attorney General Loretta Lynch in a secret deal to fix the Clinton email investigation. That is very interesting. One of, the, one of these undisclosed papers remains so secret that Justice's Inspector General Michael Horowitz was barred from discussing it in his 500-page uh, report on the FBI's investigation of Clinton. Quote, the information was classified at such a high level by the intelligence community, that it limited even the members of Congress who can see it, as well as the staffs. So, this is, in his memoir, former FBI Director James Comey says he worried Lynch might have been, uh, might be viewed as, quote, politically compromised if the secret uh, information is leaked, especially after the public found out she privately met with Bill Clinton on on, on an airport tarmac just days before the FBI interviewed his wife in July of 2016. So this ties into the nausea or the queasiness that James Comey felt because according to him, under oath, Attorney General Loretta Lynch told him to call the Clinton email investigation a matter. That would be obstruction of justice if Trump, if Trump's AG had told Christopher Wray to call you know, an investigation into Trump a matter. But Count on Barr also freeing up a highly classified May 2016 memo drafted by Clinton investigators for higher-ups at Justice, Justice's National Security Division. At the time, agents sought access to still-secret intelligence report that a foreign government, reportedly China, penetrated Clinton's unsecured private server and exfiltrated classified uh, emails. They need to explore the issue to complete their investigation since cyber espionage is relevant to their probe. They needed to, sorry, explore the... So, this is really interesting. Trump's memo directs the Attorney General to first consult with agency heads before declassifying material, and Barr, who started his career uh, at Brennan's old agency, has vowed to do just that. Quote, I know how to handle classified information, he said, and I strongly believe in protecting intelligence sources and methods. Okay, here we go. Sources and methods. You have, <laughs> you have Madam Cyberhack, who had servers outside of the United States government with top secret and special access program intelligence on these servers. It's pretty unbelievable. So, of course, it was un- her servers were unencrypted for three months. Of course, they were infiltrated by the entire planet. This is not like rocket science. More likely, Obama officials are fighting the release of these documents because they reveal their own misconduct. Well, we know from the 302s, the fourth in command at the Justice Department was serving as a liaison, an intermediary, a back channel between the FBI, Glenn Simpson, Fusion GPS, who, by the way, Mueller doesn't know who Glenn Simpson and Fusion GPS are, which is hilarious and bizarre and almost certainly not true. Of course he knows who these people are. He cannot, he cannot state, Mueller could not state, oh yeah, by the way, I knew that, uh, I knew that Hillary Clinton purchased the Steele dossier and that we utilized uh, quote-unquote evidence that was purchased by Trump's direct political rival. If you flip the script, like I always say, if you flip the script, if the tables were turned, if the shoe were on the other foot, they would never ever, ever allow any of this to take place. By the way, my channel is growing. My other channel is growing. Let's get this one to 150,000 subs. <laughs> so tell your friends, if you want to support my voice long term, my Patreon is below. And it actually helps, really helps with my other channel, H.A. Goodman's other channel, because that's completely uncensored, raw. And when it gets to the point where I can try to monetize that other channel, it won't be monetized because I am just completely uncensored 
and talk about things I would never talk about on this channel. So if you want to support my voice and ensure that the other channel continues, my Patreon is below in the pinned comment. But subscribe to H.A. Goodman's other channel. I talk about Joe Biden. I talk about what, you know, you could tell people if they call you racist for voting Trump, all these things. So that's a pretty fun, um, raw H.A. Um, Goodman channel. It's H.A. Goodman's other channel. That's below in the pinned comment. If, by the way, there might be an article out that I wrote, so there's an article that's going to be published, it's a very, very important article, if that's true, you will, I mean, if it actually happens to, tomorrow or Sunday, I'm not sure, or Monday, I will, as, as, the, as of this taping, I don't know if it's published yet, but if it is, it'll be the first thing you see in the pinned comment, right above um, H.A. Goodman's other channel and my Patreon link. Okay, um, this is a really, really interesting article so he wrote, breaking Trump order also allows, uh, also grants Barr power to declassify still secret Hillary docs. Um, the really interesting thing here is it goes on to Trump's order gives Barr unilateral authority to declassify any information classified under Obama's executive order 13526, including intelligence sources and methods. Wow, so you can declassify anything. Um, the FBI is sitting on documents, which I'm told are top secrets, secrets uh, sensitive compartment information, meaning they can only be viewed as secure. Okay, so this is what I think is really happening. They're not going to really do anything. They might prosecute somebody before the election. They might. I think that the roof is going to cave in in terms of in the intelligence community officials who were corrupt, like Comey and Strzok and McCabe and Brennan and Clapper and all of them, Bruce or those people in the Justice Department, people like Christopher Steele or Joseph Bufsud. These are Alexander Downer. These are people that are important but the American officials who engaged in conduct behavior that could be prosecuted under 18, the statute that I talk about in my, one of my Federalist articles, 18 U.S. Code 371, for people who conspire to defraud the United States government, I think that this next election is going to decide what happens to Comey and McCabe and Strzok. I think that McCabe and, and, and others could be indicted prior to the election, okay? I think eventually, inevitably, these people are going to get indicted. I think Trump's going to win again. You know that I'm telling you from day one, early 2017, in the Huffington Post and then my Times of Israel article uh, a couple months ago saying Clinton's going to run, if Clinton wins, then Comey and Strzok and McCabe and Clapper and Brennan, you know, very likely not going to get indicted. I don't see Clinton winning. Theoretically, she could if she spent well over two billion dollars because she spent one point two billion. She could get she could get the, she'll get that eight hundred million this year to make it two billion. Trump's going to get over over a billion, so she might outraise Trump, outspend Trump two to one. She still lost, outspending Trump two to one. Now, in 2015, I said Clinton could not win. In the Huffington Post, the Hill and Salon, the editors there all agreed with me. Everything I wrote went through editors. Okay, there's a reason I say this. Um, nobody listened. They said, oh, yeah, yeah. Then they said that Bernie Sanders wasn't cheated. She won fair and square. Then they say that uh, Russia hacked the DNC to inform the country that Bernie Sanders was cheated. They don't have a specific propaganda. It's like their allegiance to the intelligence community and media. They only like the New York Times. Trump, the headline, you know, Trump promotes unity. Oh, my God. And then they had to, re, they had to um, reword the headline. It's, you know, there's just a pure, transparent, overt quest for political influence and power. That's it. That's it. They don't care how they do it. And they don't care 
if they drag the country through the mud. They really don't. But why are we still talking about Clinton's private servers, emails, documents that are secret? Because it was an overt cover-up. When people say, ah, H.A. Goodman said Clinton would be indicted, she committed crimes. You had Loretta Lynch meeting with Bill Clinton to speak about golf, Brexit, and grandchildren. You had Peter Strzok del- uh, deleting five references to gross negligence, would, would, which would have directly implicated Clinton under U.S. Code uh, 793F. That's under the Espionage Act. Gross negligence. You don't need intent. He added intent to something you don't need intent for. There were agreements that said you can't talk about the Clinton Foundation and you couldn't indict uh, Clinton's attorneys for obstructing justice. There were laptops the FBI couldn't get a hold of. There were laptops that they did away with. And... The, the FBI was okay with that. Then they went after Trump with everything they had. And they went after everyone around him with everything they had. And, I mean, do you think Bill Maher cares? He doesn't know. So Bill Maher is like, you're going to see, look, okay, Hollywood, people like Bill Maher, the average writer at the Washington Post, they don't care anything Anything that is spread first by FBI or, or, or Brennan or Clapper through the media, anything that's spread without evidence, they're okay with fomenting and repeating. So when they say that Clinton did nothing wrong, that she was exonerated, that she didn't intentionally commit any crimes and that it was a big, you know... Whatever, nobody hacked her servers. Well, that's what they're being fed from Comey. Same with Clapper feeding the whole, and Brennan and Comey feeding the whole Trump-Russia myth. And that's why it's important that William Barr is allowed to declassify documents. If they can declassify documents showing that not only was her server hacked, but there was more than enough intent to indict, then you get Clinton indicted and i believe she will be indicted after after she loses the election because she's running again keep saying that it ain't going to be biden okay um go on forever about that it also puts him in a position william Barr, to declassify still secret documents generated during the highly irregular clinton probe which absolved her of mishandling state secrets transmitted through her unauthorized basement email server before agents could even interview her under the order these and other agencies will finally have to cough up key classified documents including summaries of suspect and witness interviews confidential source reports transcripts of covert recording and other investigative re- records that they've withheld from congressional Republicans investigating whether for, the former administration misused its spy powers spy, uh, on, on, to monitor Trump and his aides. In addition, they'll have to loosen their grip on secret papers related to the probe of Clinton's illicit server. So this is a very good thing. Eventually, eventually, this stuff will see the light of day because it's an existential issue. So this is a Paul Sperry article, great journalist. Trump orders... Uh, Trump order also grants Barr power to declassify still secret Hillary Docs documents. This is an existential issue for the country in terms of you cannot have a functioning country, a functioning state, if one top official is allowed to have servers. Think about it this way. You, ha- you, you, you work at Microsoft or Apple or any company. You're, you're, the, you're the CFO of a company or whatever. You're a manager at an investment bank, a vice president or whatever. And you install your own servers. <laughs> you don't run on the company servers. You think, you think Facebook would allow that? No, they're the ones infiltrating your data. You think Microsoft? We think Bill Gates would allow that. Oh, no problem. You're you're the new uh, manager here. Oh, okay. You have your own servers. Okay, that's good. 
Uh, oh, and they're linked directly to Apple. No problem. Just give them all our secrets. No tech company would allow that, but the government allowed that with Clinton. I mean, you know, you, you, wouldn't, you just wouldn't see that. You wouldn't see that in the private sector because it would be absurd. It would be so ridiculous you couldn't even imagine that. There is something called corporate espionage. So if you, if you just, you get hired by a company and the day, the day that you set up your own servers is the day they fire you and confiscate your servers. The company would, like Microsoft would confiscate your servers. You wouldn't say, oh, these are mine. Because I, I put yoga emails on there, and now I'm, you know, any company would. The U.S. government would if you were anyone else but Clinton. And if you had top secret and special access program intelligence, they wouldn't even, you would go straight to jail. But, but media, Democrats, and they contr- basically, essentially control the media, the mainstream media narrative. If you just... Um, if you dare question, if you dare question that Madam Cyberhack could have been hacked or was uh, using server servers to um, circumvent record keeping laws and circumvent scrutiny from the public and from gov- from the U.S. government about pay to play schemes from the Clinton Foundation, oh my God! And they say, oh yeah, you know, why is money going into the Clinton Foundation from Uranium One executives? And they talk about Russia as if like they're these cold warriors. This is, they're, it happened under their watch. And they also, 20% of U.S. uranium capacity was sold under their watch. There are mines in Utah owned by Putin now. That's in the New York Times. And yellow cake uranium was shipped out of the country. That's in the New York Times. So the corruption, look, Democrats are not going to win because in 2020 with Clinton, they're going to, Clinton's going to be the nominee, but they're not going to win no matter what the polls say, because there's too much deception. There's too much corruption. It's not sustainable. People, they they can go and rant and rave about Trump, but the one thing Trump is, is he's genuine. Now he's crude sometimes, rude sometimes, but he's a counterpuncher. They go after him. They don't treat him in a presidential manner. Then he act, he, responds uh, in a reciprocal manner. And he doesn't kowtow to any of the absurd media message messages. He doesn't usually kowtow. Um, he doesn't, I mean, he has a little bit lately, but whatever. Um, they, they, he's genuine. He has a message. President Obama, for example, deported 3 million human beings, and he was on a faster pace than President Trump at this point in their presidencies. Okay? But President Obama is shielded from criticism because he, you know, says the right things. Clinton um, is shielded from the scrutiny anybody would receive because the media, that's their cherished, that was their cherished pick. With Trump, he is who he is. So there's not, it, it, it is his, his presidency is sustainable. The, the economic growth is sustainable. He wants to restructure trade deals. He has a foreign policy where he wants to bring home Americans. He stated that all Americans in, in one counterinsurgency conflict. He has policies that are working. There's record low black and Latino unemployment. So he's a pretty bad bigot. He's, he's really bad at being a racist monster. The economy is at an all... Uh, Record low unemployment for nationally, and there's a million jobs. There's a million job openings. There's a million more job openings than workers to fill them. Okay, uh, there are economic zones. He's signed the First Step Act. He did a lot. He's done a lot of great things. First president to step foot in North Korea to start the process, peace process between North and South Korea. That happened under Trump. 
President Obama destroyed Libya and helped uh, further the destruction in other countries. But why am I going into this spiel? The reason is because with Trump, there isn't he's not doing things that are not sustainable. The media actually quotes things he never says, looks at the subtext that isn't there, and then creates this world that doesn't exist. And I explain on H.A. Goodman's other channel. So it really doesn't matter how much money Clinton raises, because she'll raise maybe well over $2 billion. But it ain't going to work out. <laughs> it ain't going to, because the, the average American might not like, the average American might say, well, Trump's personality isn't that great, but he's a great, he's a good president. The average American's not going to say, you know what, um, all of this, all of this corruption on Clinton's end, well, at least she's polished. At least she's, you know, presidential. And I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that I vote despite that I vote for Clinton in 2020, despite the fact that the economy is doing well, despite the fact that this, there's no, you know, horrendous uh, foreign policy disaster. So, I mean, a whole bunch of other reasons, in addition to the corruption, I guess that's what I was trying, <laughs> slowly trying to get to. The more we find out in the next month, year and a half, the more we find out about the corruption, the more that William Barr declassifies, the more John Durham's investigation um, becomes even more expansive, the more we'll realize that, yeah, Clinton's not a good, not a good fit for the White House. But this is their last chance at, at, at retaining or regaining power. So they're not going to give it up with Botox Biden, who makes gaff after gaff, or any other candidate there because if they're going to lose 2020 they might as well give it i mean you think of it from the democratic party perspective they might as well and clinton's perspective we might this might might as well give it that old college try and try again because you're going to lose with that anyone uh, on that debate stage so why not clinton again and to them trump is like the worst president of all time even though <laughs> He's, he's the best president of my lifetime, and I can easily debate anyone on that. Give me your thoughts below. Share this segment everywhere. William Barr. It's very, very good news. Uh, check out H.A. Goodman's other channel. Get people to su subscribe to this channel and that channel. There's H.A. 2A, my firearms channel, um, and I'll probably upload some segments in the next couple of weeks there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much. If one of my articles is up, it'll be below in the pinned comment.